guys, it's Graham with Tutorial Clarity. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to utilize the 3D camera that we used in our previous lesson, along with the parented null object, to create a quick text effect. Um, we're also going to be using trap code form and some simple audio keyframes to create the dispersed particle field effect. Uh, so here's the effect without the dispersed particle field, but uh, pretty much this is the main effect that we're going for. Right, so that's pretty cool, and that's really all I want to get out, is how to do that kind of an animation with the quick text and the motion blur. Um, no 3D rotations, just quick on, quick off kind of a thing, if you ever want to do that. But here it is with the dispersed particle field effect. And you can see, I mean, that just adds something better to it. So I really try and get as much into my lessons as I can to really give you guys a better uh, idea of Adobe After Effects and all the possibilities that are open within it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to create a new composition, composition, new composition, and you can just copy my settings here. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. I have my duration set to 8 seconds. I'm going to hit OK, and uh, we're just going to create some few layers here. We really, the good news is we don't have many layers that are actually required to create this effect. They're pretty standard, solid layers, text layers, camera layers, a null object for the camera layer. Uh, we have some audio, a wave to import, and that's pretty much it, other than our particles, which is still optional in itself. So I'm going to go to layer, new, solid, and I'm going to call this layer background. And that's our background layer taken care of. What else do we want? Our text layer, layer, new, text. And just to start this off, I'm going to say isn't, because I'm basically going off what you saw in the video, isn't this cool or something like that. I think it was, uh, isn't this stuff cool from memory. Anyway, uh, next object is our camera, layer, new camera, and we'll call this camera, like such. Just drag it there for you. And uh, I have my preset set to 35 millimeter, enable depth of field by default, click OK. Click OK once more. And we need a null object. If you'd, uh, you'd already be familiar with this concept if you followed the last tutorial, because what we do is we parent the uh, camera to the null object, and we use that null object for positioning. So I go to Layer, New, and Null Object. I'm just going to come down here, select it, hit Enter on my keyboard, and call this Null, so you guys can better read it. And I'm going to hide the null object. Actually, I'm not going to hide the null object. I'm going to hide it later, because we're going to be using it for positioning. But, uh... Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, now we need to add our solid layer, layer new solid, and we'll call this particles. And this is going to be for our particles. We'll just drag this down here just above the background layer. And last but not least, let's import our audio. Right click under the project here. I right click, go to import, file, and here it is, Narvis, the epic soundtrack. Mwahaha. Dot wave. And uh, usually always has to be dot .wave because After Effects is picky with MP3s, unfortunately. So with that, let's just take care of our background layer. I'm just going to drag my Narvis.wave onto the composition just to say that we have everything on there. So I'm going to select my background layer. I'm going to go to Effect, go down to Generate, and let's find it Ramp. This is my gradient. And I'm going to hide my Particles layer just for now by clicking the eye icon. So now my background layer is visible. And I'm going to set the start color to blue. Let's set it to about moderate blue there. You're free to make it whatever colors you like. I'm just going along with the uh, tutorial clarity blues. <laughs> and uh, start a ramp. Let's put this at negative 225. And I'm trying to get the blue and the white to blend together as much as possible. Let's drag up the end of ramp. It's very subtle here. I don't want to go. I don't want it to go into like solid white. So I'm going to set it to actually, let's see what 950, maybe 975. Yeah, that's good. So you can just barely tell that it goes into the white, which is kind of nice. It's very subtle. And that's pretty much it for our background layer. Now our text layer. Believe it or not, it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and add a glow to it. Effect stylize glow. You know I like my glow on my text layers. So, yeah, we're just going to keep the default settings for the glow. And uh, we're going to go ahead and duplicate. We're going to duplicate this text layer. So I'm going to hit Control-D with the uh, isn't selected. 
the isn't text layer, control D, maybe like three times. And for the sake of reading, I'm going to drag my original above everything else and so forth, just creating them from least to greatest there so it's easier to read and understand. And then I'm going to select my second layer down and I'm going to call this, after I select my text tool, of course, and I'm going to call this isn't this. And then I'm going to select the next one. Sorry if you can't read it. I'm just naming these text layers. If you can't understand, I'm sorry. But uh, selecting the next one down here, isn't this stuff cool? And I'll add a question mark into that. Now, the re you're probably asking, why don't I just separate them? Well, I could. I mean, hey, I can definitely click on one of these and then, you know, drag it up for you to see that they're separated. But I don't want to. I'm going to turn on my tile action safe here, and I want to show you that if I hold down control and shift and select all these, I want them to all be in the center. Because when we animate them on, they're going to come in from off the canvas and to the left, and I want them to all be at the same level. So they need to be on top of each other like this in a manner of speak. So I'm going to drag them off the canvas here. By holding down shift, you can get that uh, solid drag. So just be careful. Hold down shift and drag it off the canvas. I'll zoom out for you. You can see they're over here now. And um, all right, so basically now we need to worry about our camera. And I'm going to select the camera layer over here, and I'm going to parent it by grabbing the pick whip and just pick, wing it, pick whipping to the null object. And you can see here now that our camera is parented to the null object. So now we're going to hit F4, and I think this would be a good point to set our 3D layers. So yeah, if you hit F4 on your keyboard, we're just going to go down the list here and we're going to set all our text layers to 3D and uh, let's set our null object to 3D even though we're really not going to be doing any positioning within 3D space I want you to see the settings so we'll pull down the null object go to transform and let's get to animating let's also pull down our isn't text layer and let's go to uh, transform and we have our position here so we're going to animate the position by left clicking the stopwatch and we don't want it to go too long let's go up to one second let's actually make this really short something like uh, half a second would be at 15 frames yeah let's go to like 10 frames a little less than half a second set another keyframe and I'm going to drag the position here to the left until it's in the center in fact I'm just manually gonna drag it right there in the center. That's why the tile action safe is good to have on. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that there. And then I want it to stick on for a second, so I'm gonna drag forward a little bit, set another keyframe. This is just basic animating. And then I want it to go up pretty quick. Maybe like uh, there. And then I want it to go up like so. Not too far just just up there and I'm gonna pull this back up and another thing I'm gonna do is turn on my motion blur so if you click this button right here and enable motion blur within your composition then we're gonna select our text layers down here and we're gonna apply the motion blur to all those much like we did by making them 3d layers so now uh, After Effects is automatically gonna generate motion blur for us pretty useful so let's just animate this or scrub through the timeline it's pretty cool, it comes on all motion blur like, sits there for just a little bit and then goes up. All right, now we got that in place. Let's pull this back down so we have our, actually let's not pull it down, let's pull down our this second text layer. Go to transform, as before, we're just repeating the process. That's all we're doing. I'm gonna scrub forward and then it goes up and as soon as this is about halfway up to keep things fluent in the animation, like right there, I'm going to set a keyframe for the position on this layer and I'm going to go, let's see, that'll keep the default frames and let's see, let's go about the same distance. When does isn't, as soon as isn't stops, which is about there, that's when I want the text layer to be fully on. So you'll see what I'm talking about. 